Welcome to CIT 125 Web Design and Development. I'm going to be your instructor for this semester, Dr. DuPont, or some students like to call me Dr. D. For this course, this is going to be an online asynchronous version of CIT 125. What that means is you are going to have weekly activities and readings that you will complete at your own pace. However, please note that I will be available to assist and help. You will have all of the materials that you will need for each week to complete your activities and assignments. With that, some things to point out here. As this is asynchronous, probably the best way you're going to want to have meetings with me if you have any questions is either through Zoom or in a later video I'll talk more about our Microsoft Teams page. Now, just to continue reviewing the syllabus, you do have a required textbook for this course. This is the Web Design Playground HTML and CSS, the interactive way. These can be purchased at the CCAC North Campus Bookstore. You can also call into the other campus bookstores and ask them to have a copy shipped to you. I've also included the ISBN numbers in case you'd like to look elsewhere to obtain your textbook. Outside of that, this course we are going to be focusing on HTML and CSS. One important thing to note is I assume zero knowledge regarding HTML and CSS in this course, so we will be get building from the ground up. This will also prepare you for future classes if you'd like to continue exploring web design and development, which we'll talk about at the end of the course. Let's go ahead and get into the nuts and bolts of the syllabus here. For this course, you are going to have one midterm exam, you're going to have about 10 learning activities and four projects throughout the semester. The projects and learning activities will be a combination of content and also out of the textbook, and the midterm exam will cover the first six weeks of content. You will have one week to complete your midterm exam, and then also as well as far as your learning activities and projects go. Each of these will emphasize different elements and different groups of concepts that apply to the HTML and CSS. Now, project late policy for me, uh, I ask that students turn in an assignment up to two days after the due date for 10% off the total grade on the assignment. Now, just to point out though, if something's truly going on, you know, and you're having difficulties, you gotta talk to me. If you reach out to me, you know, we can probably work around it and then we can make sure to get you back on track to be successful in the course. Also as well, another thing that I do in my courses is once I grade a project, I'd like to draw your attention to the project attempts section. You will have one additional attempt to redo and correct your mistakes made on the project. So you will see these outlined in your rubric as far as what points were lost, and then you'll have a chance to redo it to receive full credit. Outside of that, your learning activities are pretty much small weekly activities that are meant to reemphasize the concepts from that week. Projects, on the other hand, are meant to enforce and also start tying together several of the concepts that students have learned up to that point. Another important element for CCAC regarding our syllabus and something you need to pay attention to is attendance and tardiness. More specifically for an online asynchronous, you need to think about your attendance. As far as unexcused absences, students are expected to log into the Blackboard site at least once a week and be working on and submitting activities. If you do not, number one, you will have 25 points lost per absence, but also as well, an important thing to point out, and this is set forth as far as the college is concerned, I'm required to check attendance for the first three weeks of the term and report students who have never attended or stopped attending the college to the registrar. If you have not logged in in the first three weeks, this can mean that you would be dropped from the course. So you want to make sure that you're logged in and participating. So outside of that, um, you could be dropped from the course. The biggest thing that we often find is this can also mean that your financial aid may uh, be adjusted, including no refund of tuitions or fees. Outside of that, a couple of other things to point out here. Quiz and test makeup. You don't really have quizzes in this course, you just have the midterm. There will be no makeup on the midterm as you will have one week to complete it. Now, let's talk about your technology requirements a little bit here. You are going to need access to a computer with internet and web browser, CCAC Blackboard account, and your CCAC email. 
especially your academic email, as that's how you're going to gain access to the Microsoft Teams uh, class discussion area. You're also going to want some form of storage for your projects and practices for this course. If you're using your own personal machine, you know, using the documents folder would be fine. If you're using a public machine, I would advise something like a USB drive, or if you have a cloud account like Google Drive or Dropbox, those will work as well. You'll also want to have an IDE to do your scripting in, and you'll have a lecture on this a little later on here. And then lastly, we're going to be uploading and practicing uh, using GitHub as far as creating your portfolio sites that you'll be able to add to on GitHub. So you will need to make a GitHub account. Outside of that, some other things to point out here. I strongly encourage students to read through my policies and procedures. But another thing to point out is cheating, especially in a scripting developmental course. There is plagiarism when it comes to code. You want to be really careful on this. Yes, there's only so many ways that you can write or design tables or create CSS, you know, uh, fixed backgrounds. However, if you use a reference from the internet, such as W3Schools or MDN, all I ask is that you make a note of it in your comments that this was a reference used. You won't be the first person to use references. And if you aren't sure as far as plagiarism is concerned when it comes to code, just reach out and ask me and we can get you squared away on that. Outside of that, please make sure you read through as far as the CCAC student handbook and also as well as far as our policy manual, administrative regulation manual and the civil rights complaint procedure and also as well our Office of Supportive Services for Students with Disabilities. The last thing that you have access to in your syllabus that's actually also on the Blackboard site is your course plan, which kind of takes you through each week, not only the topics, but what we will be doing as far as activities and what's going to be assigned or due as far as grading is concerned. Outside of that, that's pretty much the start of the syllabus. You do have a copy of this in Blackboard, and then you can also go in and you can either download or you can just come directly to the Google Drive and reference the live document.